Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Brooklands. It's not often I get a chance to stand on this stage, so I'm kind of elated tonight. I can't see any of you, which is a bit of a problem, but welcome. And as ever, thank you for being here and thank you for supporting the Trust. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Steve Clark. I have the pleasure of organising these events and um, it is a pleasure, although sometimes I wonder why I actually do it. <laughs> And we have three exceptional gentlemen with us tonight. So will you please welcome Steve Parrish. He's on his way through. James Whitton. And John McGuinness. Ah, uh, James, you're there. <sighs> there you go, mate. You're in the middle. Uh, hopefully, can you hear me? Yes, the mic, the mic is working. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, lovely to be here tonight. Um, very sad about um, John, I'm sure. In fact, I know that James and John here have all um, touched or been in touch with John over the years, and we've all admired him for some of his achievements. Um, and it is ironic that he died March the 10th, which is actually the same day as Barry Sheen died, which was 14 years ago. It's quite an ironic situation, really. Um, so very, very sad, but what a great gentleman and what a, a great ambassador to our sport he was. And he'd still turn up at events and still ride his bikes and drive his cars. In fact, uh, recently I've been here with him in a go-kart event that he does for his son, Henry, that sadly was killed. So the family's been touched with a lot of grief just recently. Anyway, tonight isn't about grief, tonight is about uh, enjoying ourselves and I'm certainly going to enjoy myself and I'm pretty certain James is because we have the wonderful John McGuinness here, 23 times TT winner and most of the time, John, I get to talk to you, you're shitting yourself because you're about to start a race. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you because I know you're shitting yourself because you're about to start a race and, and we're, James and I, we actually go up and down the, the, is that whining a bit, we go up and down the kind of grid at the TT really not wanting to talk to anyone because we've been there and know what it's like. And we uh, don't want to, to be fair, John's about as good as he any is. of them. Absolutely, he's yeah. No, he's the best, actually. Yeah, so we can't get... Uh, well, I mean, Have you not noticed that I always choose him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but inside I'm thinking, oh, fuck's sake. That's yeah, 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 that, yeah, that toss is coming <laughs> over again. Um, anyway, what's that? Where's, where's the beer? Ah, <laughs> the beer comes at half-time, I think, oh, I believe. Yeah, so yeah. I'll, I'm going to uncrack one of these. But, John, um, thank you very much indeed for coming down. You've been massively busy just recently. Well, I'm gonna, obviously I'm going to shove in the shameless plug for my book straight away. My book comes out on the 4th of May, uh, my autobiography. But uh, we did some work on the book. When was it? Well, I'll tell you what it was. It was, it was a Thursday. I don't know the date it was. But it was Thursday in the morning on the train, down to London, back up, back up to Louth where the Honda team is. For dinner with, with Guy Martin, which is really interesting. We'll talk about him later on. Yeah. Uh, from, <laughs> yeah. From from there to Doncaster Airport, over to Dublin, Dublin bike show. Then from Dublin to Holyhead to home. Then on out of flight to Gibraltar. Did some work in Gibraltar for three days with a sponsor, Bet Victor. Then went to Monte Blanco for four days to test. Then we didn't couldn't fly out of anywhere, so I had to go back into Portugal to fly out from Faro. I had to get back for my daughter's birthday, otherwise I'd have got shot big time because I missed, I missed my son's 16th birthday, which I was a bit upset about. Uh, but I'm, I, I got, got back for my daughter's uh, birthday, and then from there I went to, uh, where did we go from there? Oh, to, flew from Manchester to Inverness. Inverness to Belfast last night. Belfast, Manchester this morning, here today. So it's been there. That's it. I don't see. Three chat shows in sort of three different countries, really. Scotland, Ireland, and here. Should be good, then. Oh, I'm ready. I'm, I'm up to speed with it now, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, it was good, yeah. But, uh, oh, that's, it's, been, it's been a whirlwind the last couple of weeks. I'm starting to smell a bit. Yeah, I thought that, yeah. yeah. I thought you'd been jogging, actually. <laughs> I've been living out of a bag, and I've been through every pair of undies, every pair of socks. Right, every okay. well, I'm sure James has got some spare ones. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and, and the event you were at last night was Northwest 200. Yeah. Uh, event, which is arguably your first major event. You're going to be, I guess, riding and testing a lot before, but that's the sort of first chance in anger, right? It is, yeah. I mean, uh, we've got another two-day test, two two-day tests at Castle Coombe. We actually test, it, test there because 
we want a track that's quite bumpy and quite fast and that's really only you can't really simulate any road circuits but that's sort of the closest thing you can get castle coon but uh yeah but and then hopefully we'll be ready, but you can't really tell till you, mm. you know, you go around your KP and around that little roundabout and then it's 200 mile an hour plus mm. and you, the only time you get to test it is just on the track, but uh, hopefully we'll be ready. Uh, the test was, we struggled a little bit, the new blade's been, uh, it's been quite tricky. There's been a, a lot of electronics, anti-wheelie, uh, traction control, it's got a blipper box fly-by-wire and couldn't even get the thing to run for two days, so mm. it was really frustrating. And, I landed on my head as well, that had a crash for a while, I threw it up the road as well, so I got flipping hurt my arse and my, and my thumb as well, so I gave myself a bit of a beating up. Guy Martin was upside down, so we're just both there, two crash bites, thinking, oh, it's going to be a long year, this. And, uh, <laughs> but towards the end of the test, we, uh, we got some direction, thankfully, and uh, we was actually going okay at the end, so it was pretty encouraging at the end, but that's what testing's all about, new bike. and. Yeah. I've waited so long for it, I've had so many, so many laps on the old blade, I, I thought I was going to jump on it and it was going to, yeah. ride, it was going to ride itself. But I, it's I was just about to say, it. you kind of got what you've been wanting, I'm sure, because all the other bikes have got all the electronics and everything else, but, but now it's dialing them in and getting them right. And the problem is, uh, I know a lot of you are bike fans, but testing a car is a lot easier because you might have a bit of understeering, it might kick in or whatever, but you don't normally end up sliding down a road. That's the difficulty with testing a bike, right? Well, that was it. It was, it was the, the power was coming in, the throttle was open and the power wasn't coming in. And then sometimes the, the, the butterflies and the throttle bodies are actually opening when they shouldn't have been. Mm. So when I crashed it, I went into one of the bends, the throttle opened, and I just got the fright. <laughs> I was like, I had a bit of a passion, then I went down and... You know, it's, it's, a, it's not great, to be honest. No. Uh, no. But uh, the bikes have been quite late coming. They're struggling a little bit in World uh, Superbike as well. But uh, it's, it's challenging. And uh, sometimes that's what we want. But together, we work together. There's a World Endurance team was there as well, the old Frenchies. And then the BSB boys were there as well. So by the end, we, was, we were somewhere near the mark. But it was not, not much fun for a day or two. Mm. It gets a bit no. frustrating and there's a few. Mm. <laughs> Can I ask him how much help he's getting from under the cells? Because one of the things I work within World Superbike, we've been commentating on it for the last two rounds, and, or the first two rounds of the year, which have been over the last month, and both riders in, both Braddle and Nicky Aiden are saying that there's virtually nothing coming from under, and that's even at World Superbike level. Mm. It's all done Same for you. Ten, <laughs> ten car Anybody from Honda in here? <laughs> <laughs> I can there always is, unfortunately, but no. To be yeah. honest, yeah, I don't think Dave really know. I think uh, the minute those two boys have been test pilots and they've been getting really frustrated, the bike come, come really, really late as well, yeah. but they were bl they're blaming it on an earthquake, but I just think, I don't mm. think it was quite, quite ready. But uh, it's massively frustrating, you know, like, if HRC are involved, Honda Racing Corporation, they put everything into it, like, Spend millions of pounds, millions and millions on the Dakar. Massive input into the Most Cross uh, Grand Prix uh, challenge. But for us, we're sort of left to our own. That's know, what I they were saying. Yeah, yeah we're sort of, we are struggling a little bit, you know. But thankfully, the chassis is the same. So, the, you know, the, the subframes, everything, yokes and all that, all, all, all fit. And there's nothing wrong with the chassis. It's just we needed ponies. That's all we needed. We needed horsepower. And uh, the electronics at the minute, for me, I'm old school. I'm more of a right wrist man and, and seat him in pants really but could, could, could it will be good it's the way forward yeah BMW i mean and the i guess has at, at the very worst you can turn it off but it's not really the way to go because you're going to benefit when it is working correctly mm. Mm. well that means i might have to race for another year doesn't it I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to race for a lot more years what else are you going to do yeah I know, I know. um James, you, um, you, you do some work with Suzuki's, for instance. You've just got some new GSX-R yeah, um, Have Suzuki, they arrived? Uh, just arriving now. Um, I run some training days still at various circuits, and Suzuki are good enough to provide us with our instructor bikes, and we've run the old GSX-R 750s and 1000s until this year. They've gone back, and we're just waiting for four new 1000s. And actually, it's quite the opposite with the Suzuki than with the Honda story. The new Suzuki G6R has been a long time in coming. They needed a new bike. The old one was long in the tooth, a big old lump. It was a lovely bike, but it needed upgrading. Mm. And uh, the new bike's really good. The, the, I can only speak for stock bikes, not for, not for super bike spec ones that, like John's talking about. Yeah, but the stock Suzuki works really well. Electronics please, work really well. Please don't tell me that way. Well, yeah. And he eats lots of power as well. It's 200 brake cost. He, he doesn't want to know that. Um, so we've got your ponies that you want, I think. That fat Irishman's got, I know, that little... Uh, yeah, yeah. Mr Dunlop, he's got one. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, he's going to be riding one as well. He's keeping an eye on him in the car, mm. he's going quite fast on it as well. So. Was he? Yeah. yeah. Okay, right. But yours was playing up, your bike was playing up anyway. 
What, um, when are you going to get fed up with falling off? Do you think that's the big... <laughs> no, but like you said, you, were t you had a tumble testing. Um, and the nice thing about falling, people say, well, you must be mad going to fall off. You never think you're going to fall off. It just happens. So you, kind of, you don't get any lead up to it or anything else like that. But does it get more painful, do you feel? Or, or, or does it take longer yeah. to heal up? It's funny. Like, I think all crashes are individual. And they've all got a bit of a story to tell yeah. as well. Because I had a crash at the classic TT on that pattern, that little 500 yeah, at pattern. Yeah, at Calder Bridge. And ironically, and I was laid in my bed thinking, you know, I've done 20 TTs, four classic TTs. And... You know, I've never been up the road. And, right. uh, I went down to Quarter Bridge, got a bit greedy on the throttle, <laughs> lashed the throttle on and, and threw the thing up the road and uh, there's 80 grams of the pattern going down inside, sliding down the road, I'm going, oh, fuck, I'm running after it. Thinking, Hoping no one saw like, it. <laughs> like, Roger's going to go mad, the guy who owns it, he's pride and joy. And, uh, and I had loads of mixtures of, it was funny, mixed, mixed feelings of, you know, you prick, you know, it's like Quarter Bridge, you're telling the newcomers and, and you just say to them, Whatever you do, be really careful at Quarter Bridge. Full tank of fuel, new tyres. I had a full tank of fuel, new tyres, and mm. went up the road on my ass. Mm. So I picked it up. So I was angry with myself to get get it back. Get this bike fixed. Let me get back out. But I was actually sitting back, thinking, well, you know, if you had a deck of cards on the on the table and they went right, pick a car now. That's where you're going to crash. And you pull Quarter Bridge. Yeah, that you go. One. I love that yeah. one. But yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, I crashed my engine. My biggest. Painfulest crash was probably one of my slowest when I broke my wrist in 2014. Yeah, that was off-roading. Yeah, nasty as well, wasn't it? it? Took a while. Nasty, nasty, yeah. Mm. But, you know, I, I, I dislocated my shoulder, uh, shoulder uh, my wrist, complicated bones in there, uh, scaphoids, lunates, all sorts of stuff. And, you know, I went to the surgeon and said, I'm going to TT in 10 weeks, fix that. You know, he's like, forget it. I said, no, fix it. That's what, that's what we do as racers. But that... It wasn't just that. I thought I broke that wrist, and uh, I, I hit, I hit my neck, I hit my back, I hit my balls, I hit my ass, and I, seriously, I couldn't lay down for three weeks. I was, I was shitting blood, peeing blood. I, I, it was horrible, horrible crash. And you know, I hit this boulder. Mm. I thought that boulder's not moving. That's been mm. there for a long time. I wasn't shifting it. Mm. But you know, I've had some massive crashes on road races and things on short circuits and. You know, I've done one of them, and, but, uh, and you've had a few yourself. James had a few. <laughs> had a few. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, to be honest, now it's all over and my career's finished, I look back at the, some of the crashes and they're some of the highlights, if you know what I mean, because you can talk about them and people think you're a little bit nuts, and you're not nuts. It's mm. all quite considered, but things happen, like Steve said. And, but some of the funny things that happened, looking back, at, when I was about 18, I fell off a 125. Now, this bike only just had enough power to hurt you. It wasn't a fast bike. Somehow managed to fall off at the S's at Mallory. Went in the, went in the barrier straight forward, slid across the grass, not a lot of run-off in them days, straight into the tyre wall. Ended up breaking both collarbones at the same time. Which, to be fair, the lads will tell you, collarbone, anybody who's broke a collarbone, it's easily, fixes in about three weeks, and it's not that painful once, it, once you get sort of sat down still. But I can tell you that one thing you cannot do, that is impossible to do, without at least one good collarbone is... Wipe your ass. Wipe your bum. <laughs> uh, so I went home, and I was living at home at the time, and I'd got... A, 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 my girlfriend had, at the time, I'd only been going out with her about six months, and... Well, she wasn't after that. <laughs> hey, well, my mum and my girlfriend at the time had to take it in shifts. <laughs> right? And get this, I, I didn't really know it because I was in some distress for a week or so. And when I was getting better, I still couldn't. I actually pretended I couldn't wipe it for quite a long time. <laughs> but, but get this, I, I remember looking round, getting off the pot, looking round. The girlfriend, literally of about four or five months, she's there, hand in hand, and I looked at her face, and she, I could tell she was thinking, I never signed up for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I should have turned these. Offer of hard for lager and black down. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I, uh, I did the uh, same. I broke one collarbone and dislocated another shoulder. Uh, took myself, drove myself to Adam Brooks Hospital in 1978, I think it was. At the time, I had an old Rolls Royce because it was the thing to have. And I used to buy them and clock them and sell them for more money. Is there any policeman in here as well? <laughs> Um, but I drove myself to hospital, and in those days, they used to put you in a figure of eight. I don't know yeah. if you have one of them. Yeah. Strap back, yeah. so I had them both strapped back, and I'd driven myself. So I had to drive home like this. 
And, and I, I do remember, because the Rolls Royce needed about that far to turn that much, so I was going around corners <laughs> kind of like this. I, I managed to get myself home, but that was the only way. And, and Parrish, everything... Parrish's best ever car, right? I once mm. went to his house and we're all going to... Do you know there's a circuit at... Um, it's where Jonathan Palmer started his uh, empire of, of track training. Oh, yeah. uh, at Bedford Autodrome. Bedford Autodrome, right? It's an old airfield, made into several tracks, and it's all corporate. <clears throat> and we're doing some testing for a magazine. Got to, got to Parrish's house. What did he set up and drive? He drove me and himself and... Terry Reimer. Terry Reimer. Mm. We drove up there in... A hearse. <laughs> <laughs> not only that, no. not only that. When we, when we got there, the, the track was a bit damp and we didn't want to go out and test these bikes. So he says, we'll do a few laps in the hearse and get it dried out. <laughs> we, we're bombing round, screeching the tyres. And then as we're going round, you know the hats they wear, like a top hat, but with a ribbon down the back, right? We found some of them under the seat, so we've all got them on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. She went well. Yeah. And then uh, on the way home, we, we got down about 20 miles an hour and a whole about 20 cars behind. <laughs> <laughs> following, following a proper hearse. Or... Did you have a but, coffin, didn't I? Yeah, I've got, 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 got a coffin. In fact, I bought one my size, so it saved a few quid. <laughs> yeah, but hey, he's got a coffin, but he's got a dummy's hand that hangs out the side of it, right? Yeah. With a watch on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's from China. So it's not a real one. No, I'm supposed to be the sensible interviewer here tonight. Right. <laughs> Let's get back to this. Um, so, 23 TTs, and I read somewhere that you didn't want to beat Joey's TT wins. I don't believe that. You're not going to slow down. <laughs> I had to say that. I was in Ireland. Oh, right, OK. As you get kneecapped. <laughs> I've had a few threats and all, and I'm like, I'm oh, sort yeah. of laughing at them going, yeah. and they're not responding. They're actually got a straight face. No, like, yeah, I'm going to kill you if you do it. Ah. Mm. But... Uh, Wow, I mean, like, like I say, I, I never thought I'd be sat here at 45 with 23 wins when I mm. was 10 years old watching them come down Bray Hill. I was like, you know, I, to win 20, to win one TT is amazing to, to be sat here with these, this amount. But uh, we're getting close. I, to be honest, I, I, I never ever think about it until some prick like you reminds me. La last uh, night. To be honest, you know, I'm like, mm. you know, I get, then, then I get a bit of a, a bit emotional, really, a bit jittery. I think, wow, I'm, I'm pretty close to it. And... Uh, it would be nice. It would be the real icing on the cake to match Joey. I mean, Joey was my all-time hero, uh, someone I looked up to, you know, and uh, and I was his last ever teammate. You know, when mm. Joey got killed in 2000, I was his young teammate at the time. My first time on a big superbike, and uh, you know, so it's uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I think the f if he was still here, he'd be the first man to congratulate me. I know that, and I've spoken to the family, know them quite mm. well. They're not never bothered one, whatever, whatever way it goes, but. Uh, if I don't get it, then it doesn't matter. If mm. I get it, it'll be mega. I think it's probably the right thing to do. Mm. Maybe if I get to 26 and, mm. and, and, and pack in, but... Uh, Got to get them first, though. Exactly, you know. exactly. You know, yeah. the, the bottom line is, for me, is, is to be safe, you know. To enjoy, yeah. I, ended up, I so love chucking the helmet on and racing still. still get, I still got the passion and the mm. fire's still burning. And, but I'm always one for, you know, being realistic at the end of the day. If, if it... If I, if I don't feel like I can do it, I won't stick my neck out mm. or, or, or do anything else, you know. It would be pretty crap to win it on an electric bike. Mm. <laughs> but I think, ah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Uh, but I'd probably take it. But, uh, mm. but I, I will never be Joy Dunlop. Joy Dunlop's five times world uh, F1 champion. Yeah. You know, he won Ulster Grand Prix. Do you think, for, uh, yeah. tell you what, for me, though, you've got a lot in common with him because you're both kind of anti hero Or stink. No, <laughs> you just, yeah. you're not, you don't fit into the normal pattern of... No, what people no, would I'd expect. Agree. Yeah, I'd agree. You, you're still very much yourself, as Joey was very much himself. Yeah. You're still like having a tinker and fiddling yeah. around and, and whatever. So it, you don't get that in many sports that someone at your stature. What, are, what question I was going to ask you, and I can't believe we're sat here, and James and I have been covering the TT for many years. I remember at the centenary event, 2007, everyone thought that was going to be the last event. That was the build-up to it, and, and I can't believe how it's ramped up now. And, and I don't think you would have ever expected the TTB, TT to be such a prominent event now. It is arguably the most-watched motorcycle racing in the UK. It gets bigger it's viewing be, figures yeah. and Grand Prix and everything else. It's so popular now. Um, and I mean, you can see it on the telly now, can't you? Years mm. ago, we'd always got real negative press, and mm. yeah, people get injured, people get killed, we know that, they get killed mm. doing lots of sports, but uh, the positives and the spectacularness of it, and the speeds, and the, the atmosphere, and uh, all the other things that go with it outweigh mm. the other side of it, you know, and funny should say 2007, that, you know, the, the late, great John Surtees gave me my trophy when I won, when I yeah. won that 
uh, senior yeah. TT, you did, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, me and my son, we're 16 now, and we went up there and John uh, gave him, yeah, my, my senior trophy, which was really special. Have either of you two thought about four wheels? I've done a right little bit with um, guest drives in various cars, and... Um, did you crash them? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> How did I know that? Well, I'd help. I didn't... I, uh, yeah, crashed. I finished one race in a, in a Fiesta Challenge at Knock Hill, and then I did a couple of races in a thing called the Proton Coupe Cup. Because oh. we're riding, I was sponsored by Proton in the team I was racing bikes for at the time. And uh, yeah, crashed them twice. I crashed that twice. Mm. <laughs> but I wasn't on my own, I got help. Right, okay. Yeah. Someone tapped tap yeah. you. Tap. How about you, John? I, I tested Gordon Sheridan's car last year. Though. Oh, yeah, I remember up at Knock Hill. Yeah. And you were good. But a piece of piss, isn't it? Mm. But. <laughs> 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 you can hit the curve, spin. Yeah. 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 It was, yeah. It's not the same, I, same league. No, no, no disrespect to Gordon, no disrespect to Gordon but he did win the championship yeah. after I set his car up for him. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I got within half a second of what they, they were doing. Right. But to be honest, I don't know about you, I just felt safe. pretty safe with it. Safe. Yeah, and I thought, well, safe. Straight away you get in it, you think, I'm safe, nothing <laughs> bad can yeah. happen. Yeah, Different environment, hot, claustrophobic, you know, a little bit different noises and stuff, but... Still the same, it's still an engine, still yeah. got wheels and stuff. And there is that element of possibly, uh, and I do think this, I've done a bit of both, I think sometimes the, the skill factor is, I don't know, you don't have to use the bravery side of it, is what I'm trying to say, is that it's kind of easier to go nearer the, the limit because I think the penalty isn't as great. Well, yeah. you, know well, you can be greedy with the curbs, you can bounce yeah. on it. You couldn't yeah. do that on the bike, you've got to be inch perfect, especially for a quick time at Knock Hill. But, mm. you know, I, I did a session in it and then uh, I was about a second and a half off what they were doing. So I, me being me, I was like, you know, let's get the data engineer out. <laughs> What's going on? Why am I slower? And I was 150, I was 45 meters Early on earlier brakes. on the brakes into turn one and into the hairpin and mm. uh, I think different styles. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I just, I just had in my head, well, for what's 45 meters, it must be there. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> then I just went, and hit the, I mean, just how hard you can hit the brakes. It's, mm. yeah, that's yeah. The, th I could that's not, the biggest difference. I, I, I could I, not push my yeah. foot on the lever, and my, everything went it hairpin. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't press it any harder. So. No. And the yeah. nice thing is, if you get it wrong, you just go a bit wide and turn and yeah, come yeah, back. Yeah. So you can, you can actually experiment a bit more. Well, I remember one of my first, and you would have done the celebrity race. Is that what you were saying you yeah. did? I did one at Brands Hatch back, I don't know, when Machine was in it, and the Michael Lee, world speedway yeah. champion, and whatever, whatever, I can't remember all the other, I think Grant, he was in it, but Michael Lee was the faster, I, I'd actually qualify the fastest, Michael Lee was second, and we were a bit, he was a bit tasty, so uh, we went off for lunch and everything else, and when you get in these cars, you know, they strap you all in it, I turned all his heater up to maximum, <laughs> <laughs> and he had to pull out the race, honestly. <laughs> He was right with me the whole race, and then all of a sudden he pulled in and he was hey, like dripping. On, while we're on that, right, another one that you've got to watch, if you travel anywhere abroad or whatever, I've commentated and, and done all sorts of various things with Steve, as I have with many other people, with Steve you've got to watch is just practical jokes. He, he never, he never off duty, he never comes off duty with practical jokes. So you're getting tricked up, jamming your shoes in the morning, you've got pots of jam. Oh. But one of his best, right, how clever is this and how simple? When you go to a circuit abroad, and it's a flyaway, as we call them, so uh, Australia or whatever you, when you haven't got your motor home, you haven't got your own car, everybody's in hire cars. The, the paddock car park is full of hire cars, and nobody locks them up because it's a closed shop, and, and you just, you just, half the people don't lock the cars. So he finds one that's open, doesn't know who it is, you don't know whose car it is, and he gets, he gets, he's gone to a supermarket and got a pot of ground white pepper, right? The sneezy shit, not that stuff you, you, you put in a, right? Ground white pepper, he points, he aims all the air vents at the face of the driver, right? That tips, tips the pepper, blows it all down into the tubes, right? Turns the blower on full so that when you get in and turn your ignition. How we laughed on yeah. the way to A and E. Yeah. <laughs> it's best to turn a radio on full as well because that confuses the mind. Even more. <laughs> that was in my youth. That was that was that was a year or two back. Yeah. <laughs> um, family, John, important to you, I know. 
I mean, you, you just said you hate missing birthdays and everything. It never bothered me. I was never at home for any of mine. But, but I know the family's a big part of your life as well. You, when you go to the TT, it's the boat home and everyone's there and it's kind of your base and everything else. They're your bedrock. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they keep you uh, keep you grounded, the old kids. You know, you're on track and you know you might have had a bad ride or a good ride. It makes no difference to the kids mm. or whatever. But I mean, my daughter's not bothered. She's six, seven year old. But you and he's mm. he's understanding now. I think mm. he's sixteen. He, I think he sees the other side of it. So, mm. but it, it, the, the the cool kids, the missus is she's had to put up with me for for twenty eight, nineteen, eighteen, and I started going out mm. twenty eight years. So. Was she 16? She was 14. Oh. No, maybe. Yeah, she was 14 when I started. Operation uh, U-Tree in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I waited, though. <laughs> okay. I was 16 and... No, yeah, I was a bit older before mm. I put my lad in her, but it wasn't... Stop now. It was... <laughs> she was 16, no, no. yeah. It wasn't very memorable. Yeah. Is it in love? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, there, yeah, like me and you, and he was conceived on the front seat of a Honda Civic. So, right. that, yeah. right. and then I, right. after I won the 09 Formula One race, I said, You better get yourself in the back, love, and that's where Maisie was conceived. Oh, really? So, they're all been in a Civic as well? In the camper. Oh, right. So, get yourself right. down the back, love. So, yeah. So, it's uh, mm. they're definitely part of the. You say romance is dead. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I can understand the motor, but I don't know about a Civic. No. No. Well, did have variable you, valve timing. I would it. <laughs> <laughs> we were we split up for a while. We were a two couple of separations and stuff and that. And then we, were, we got back together and got a bit excited. Only two pumps and a grunt. And that was it. Job done. And then all those. <laughs> just well, well, well congratulations. Like, How many years? Twenty-eight. Oh. Twenty-eight mm. years. Yeah. So. Mm. Yes, it's it's been good. I mean, the, every, to this even behind a real good man was a good woman. And I yeah. probably think you're right. You know, yeah, I've got rid of with. mine. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, the reason why I'm, I couldn't afford the divorce now. So, uh, <laughs> Don't worry. I put the wedding video on backwards now and watch you get in the car and piss off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, uh, how do we get into this? It's about the TT tonight. It's, it's mo motorbike racing, isn't it? Um, yeah. James, yours went a bit crooked as well, but anyway, you're all happy now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but skin, it is seriously, bar, eh? seriously yeah. it's very, very difficult for a, I think a sportsman in general, because we're selfish people. I think you have to be to do what you do. You, you yeah. can't, you can't say, well, I'll come to the wedding with you, or no, not your own wedding, but someone else's. You, <laughs> <clears throat> you can't be very sociable. Your social life is screwed up. You've got to have somebody that understands all that, and it's very difficult because you become very selfish to your own needs, don't you? Yeah, I think uh, I always saw it as. Bike racing is, although you're only probably on your bike for an hour and a half a weekend if you're doing, say, a world superbike, a British mm. superbike, and that's only probably 13 or 14 weekends a year. That's not a lot of time sat on your bike actually racing. However, it's depending how it goes, it's a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week job because you're always worried about why you weren't quicker, mm. how you can do better, panicking if, you're not, if you don't think you're going to be quicker enough to earn a living out of it or lose your ride or whatever it is. It's just... You never stop thinking about it. It's something you, you, mm. you live with it and your partner has to live with it as well. And if they can't Partic with that. Particularly on weekends, you tend to be short with people as well because you focus so much on it. You're nervous, aren't you? Yeah. You, you, yeah. You, I mean, I was ever, forever saying sorry on Sunday night because I've been an arsehole. And that's <laughs> yeah. how you were. Yeah. Uh, and that's what it's all about, I think, unfortunately. Very, very difficult, but, but a wonderful life. And I think um, we're, we're honoured and very lucky people to turn a hobby into a living. That's the most important That's bit. That's the way I was saw it, yeah. Because yeah, mm. okay. you must be... I'm 42 years without a proper job now. You must be at least 30. Yeah, about about 32 or three years without a proper. Started racing at 16. Started kind of earning my living, winning a bit of prize money by about 18. Didn't really have a proper job after that. So mm -hmm. yeah, 30, 31 or two mm -hmm. years. It's uh, it's good. I, and I feel privileged that I continue to make my living in the paddock around the people I still look up to in a lot of ways. Yeah. People who are still racing, yeah. like yourself. You see, you've got it's just. You know what they're going through. It's the best job in the world and sometimes the shittiest job in the world. Yeah. But you, you, I still love being involved with it. I, 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 it's yeah, I'm difficult. Same. I, I'm saying I, I don't know what I'd do. No. You know, I just don't know what I'd do when I retire from, from racing. I definitely stay involved in, in, in the sport. And uh, what that is, I don't know. But, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm still a fan, even now. I am, you yeah, know, I'm, a, yeah, I, I, I'm doing, doing okay, but I'm still... You want to see some bikes he's got? He's got a I mean, we've all got bikes. Steve's got some. He's got 40, bikes. hasn't he? 40? Yeah, and 47. lovely stuff. A lot of two strokes, a lot of stuff I actually want, but I haven't been able to find yet. 
So what you will be doing is restoring motorbikes probably for about 20 years. Yeah, I don't mind doing a few, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's cheese. The wife's sort of a bit delicate with the amount of bikes I've got, you know. She's... <laughs> she, Just a 40. You, buy some shoes. Four, there's 40, 47. 47. 47, 47 bikes, yeah, but... 46 would be all right. Some aren't worth a lot of money, <laughs> some are, but... The great thing is in the garage, if you just slip another one in when you've got 47, yeah. you can't tell there's another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're telling me it's not yours. That's John's. Yeah, that's it. I've done that. Steve, I've done that. Just ask me to yeah. keep it there. And, uh, <laughs> I swapped one for a watch that uh, she doesn't know about yet, so I, I'm just wondering when I'm going to drop it in. But, uh, I'll just give her a shout. Yeah, yeah don't. She will, is, she's... is that the watch you want at the TT? Yeah, one of them, yeah. And yeah, you, yeah. What's it, Graham, is it? Or? A Graham of London, yeah. Right. I swapped another one a few. I swapped another one a few weeks ago for a Bentley Arnage. Oh, an really? Old, old Bentley, yeah, so I've no idea. What, why. you swapped a bike for one? No, a watch. <laughs> oh, I see. I had a bit of money in a bag and a, and a watch for this uh, Bentley Arnage, but oh, I was right. doing a rolling burnout in it the other day and fucking crown wheel and pinion snapped in back actually went straight. <laughs> They're not made like this, please. Just went bang, bang. I was like, looked in the mirror, just smoke everywhere. Oh. Not tyre smoke, oil smoke, tyre yeah. smoke, everything, yeah, so... Oh. Yeah. So but what's going to happen to that then? Is that just... Well, I'm trying to find them. If anybody in the room's got one, uh, I need to find an axle. Yeah, if anyone's one. got one, can you just yeah. not go near it for a few hours? He's nicked back axle. <laughs> we, we used to find one. It's doing my head in, though. The cheapest I've got one, it's like, they want 1,600 quid for it. I'd just... Oh. I'd sooner burn car and give six... I might as well chop it up and sell it in bits. Can you not get a tranny back axle on it or something? I'm gonna, I'm going to grab some of go. Talking something. of that, seriously, we used to do that. And I know it's, again, very much in my youth. Um, and, and you guys probably haven't been through this here. We, uh, if you were doing really well in club racing, you got yourself a transit. They used to have a V4 flipping engine, rubbish. And the rear axles used to last about 5,000 miles. So we used to have to go and rent one from Avis or something like that. Swap for the a, axle. For a night. And then Perfect. swap axles and then take it back. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> and sometimes get your money back and say, this van we rent has got a terrible back axle on it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you used to get by. I mean, part of the fun probably was when I started racing was the trips going to the racetracks. Yeah, and everything else. Some they of the were. racing that went on. I still love it racing. now. Yeah. Is it still, still going on? Yeah, we, uh, one of the best ones were we... Uh, you, you, it happened in your day, I think. We used to do, end of the season, you'd try and get, after your championship, whatever you were doing, British Championship or your Rhodes Championships, you'd try and get a few of these non-championship, hence getting paid a few quid. So you go race at Scarborough, get a couple of grand to go race there. Uh, you, there's all sorts of uh, little races going on that you could, you could turn a, a profit at. And one of the ones you'd race Saturday, you go to Ireland, practice Friday and race Saturday at the Sunflower Meeting at Kirkiston, mm. an old airfield circuit in Northern Ireland. And then you'd go overnight and do the Sunday at Darling Moor, Stars of Darling. You could, you could have a good weekend financially if it all went all right. But what it did mean is the boat back to Stranra was full of bike races and the odd truck hauling whatever they were, they were taking. And all on that, it was all single track then on A74 on mm. towards the, the, yeah, the motorway there at Carlisle. And you just raced. But what you'd get is a, a CB radio and you'd all help each other by saying, right, I've just overtook the, the Arctic, so if you're behind me, round this next blind corner, it's free, it's nothing coming. And you, so you just went on, you're on the outside of a truck, on a totally blind corner, <laughs> trusting the guy who you're going to be racing with the next day. Yeah. And I always thought, he could cripple half the bloody paddock here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's free. And, and the, it's tru a, the truck driver's thinking, what kind of nutcase is yeah. coming around yeah. the outside here? But the other thing that used to go on, and I'm sure it happened then, was on the ferries coming back. If you weren't there early, you never got on because everyone used to book their van on at about three metres when it was really about <laughs> yeah. 10 metres. Yeah. And Still you'd all just out. change, because the ferry tickets, you could change the numbers. So I didn't want yeah. to just book on a minivan instead of a transit or something <laughs> like that. And the poor last 10 people couldn't get on. The bloke would be there with his paperwork going, well, we, we've got it all down here. <laughs> I have no idea what was going on. Because everyone just cheating how long their vehicles were and everything else. And so don't tell me you've never done that sometimes job. Sometimes I never used to get to meetings at time because of Van would blow up or something, I had an IV go once for 60 10 thing, and it's all I had in the world. And it, as fast as I could weld plates on it, there was more holes coming in other places. It was That's that, the problem, then. They're fast, they yeah. yeah, they were good vans, but yeah. they just dropped to bits. And uh, I remember Mrs. had her feet up on the, on the window. She must have nodded off and pushed her foot a little bit and kicked the windscreen out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so me and her were going down the road with helmets on. <laughs> Absolutely freezing. I, I, I could, <laughs> there's a book in that, honestly. Um, that old throttle cable snapped once. and. Yeah. I've got the, the engine compartment was here, so I've got like, she, I'm driving it with clutch and braking ass, and she's she's just pulling throttle cable <laughs> <laughs> off. <laughs> 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 we got the 
<laughs> got the rhythm all sorted out by the time we got home. But, yeah. uh, well, yeah. but it's, I mean, really, Not that your, your amateur club racing days, no doubt, are the funniest. Best because fun. you're just scrabbling around. Well, I had the same exactly, but we had to jam it wide open. I just did it on the key. And so, like, you just be just, when you want to slow down, just turn the key off. But we found out it was even more fun because it backfired every time you turned it back on. So we just kept driving it but around. But don't you like think, it. I honestly think, I've got a little bit of a theory going where a lot of road racers now start on mini motors. So they start on kart tracks when they're seven, eight, whatever, how old they are. And then they want to progress into typically BSB because it's an high profile championship, every round's on TV, all that. But they don't want to do the. They don't want to do the apprenticeship. They don't want to go club racing at Cadwell and scratching mm. around at these little circuits at little meetings, earning a little bit of a trophy. They want to go straight into BSB paddock and and be on telly, and that's fine. It's it's ambitious, but I think they miss out on a mm. not just setting the bike up apprenticeship, but the flipping like you've just said, it's the fun. Pinching yeah. a bit of stuff to get you stealing diesel to get you to a meeting and fixing your van and doing a runner from flipping little chefs. We did that many runners. <laughs> we honestly, little chefs on a Sunday night, the, the two reasons why you'd always go on a little chef with your team on a Sunday night is you remember little chefs, right? They were everywhere and they were the only motorway and big road side eateries where you pay for your food after you've eaten it, right? <laughs> the rest you pay as you get it. So you go in, right? Sunday night's always full of sensible families, right? <laughs> and the other reason they're good, they were always staffed by elderly people who were very trusty, <laughs> right? So you'd go in, you'd go in, you, you, bear in mind you had a van parked in the car park in full view that had your name on the side of it, right? <laughs> so you'd go in, you'd all eat your, your food, and then you'd just walk out, not run. The key was you didn't run. <laughs> and if you were ever stopped, you just said, Oh, did it steep it? Oh, Christ, how embarrassing that is, and you had to pay it. But it never happened. <laughs> we got, the only time we thought we got caught, right, this is after hundreds of times of doing it, we're on a when coming back from Snetterton. Ate the food, walked out, it's all going well, a couple of lads are getting it van, I'm just walking out the door. A lady comes running up, eh, excuse me, just stop. I thought, oh, we've been bloody caught. I'm just about to get my money out, and she goes, you ate all your food, you lads, there's your lollipops. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, when they went bust, you know, a few years ago, I felt a little bit guilty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you, you sleep at nights all right, though, do you? Yeah. Yeah. You get by. Tell us from Yorkshire. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. There's still this Lancashire Yorkshire thing going on, is there? Yeah. Oh. Well, mind you, we're southerners. We're honoured to have you down here. Posh down, so, yeah. fitness. Something that you don't want to talk about. Who, uh, me? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> wow. it's... But I know you're as fit and, and, and as healthy as anyone going around there, but you won't do the Jimmy stuff and all the other things that go on that most of the other guys do. No, I, n I never really have Sometimes you must get satisfaction from that in lots of ways, thinking they must yeah, be looking it at me. It's, it's sweet sometimes when you beat them and yeah. stuff like that. But uh, it, it's something I'm not proud of. It's something that's gone through my career where I've, I probably should have done a little bit. I should have done some sort of training. or Not kept the weight down, if you like it, but... Uh, I haven't done them. I always find it a bit going to the. I, I've, I've tried to do it. I've tried to do the diets. I've tried to do the gym. You know, you've got everybody's got a whiz kid diet or this this helps mm. drink this or whatever. And as soon as I've gone on it, it just made me feel a little bit depressed, a bit fed up going to the gym. It's not really looking at yourself in the mirror and all that. Well, it's not really my thing. Pumping, pumping away and all that. And mm. uh, it's like a different culture. I never liked it. I always like to be outside. I don't, know. I don't mind doing a bit of walking, but mm. used to do a bit of cycling. Uh, I'm a motocross bike a lot, uh, mini biking, trials bike, uh, enduro bike, you know, I'll ride them, you know, the heart rate stuff and I'll ride them all day long flat out and that's, that's always been uh, my, my sort of training, you know, and, mm. uh, but it does, now I'm getting a little bit older, it, you, get, you get told and you get told and <clears throat> yeah, laugh it off and you laugh it off, but it is a little bit embarrassing at times and sometimes you get a little bit fed up, Honda sent me on a few I've sent me everywhere to try and get me to lose weight. Well, they, <laughs> did, didn't they, didn't they set a target for you? Wasn't there oh, a yeah, bonus did, scheme yeah, or something? Yeah, they did. Well, to be honest, it was a little bit like my idea. I'm like, right, this is it. I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to get down to 12 and a half stone. So I said, right, Neil, my blood. I said, right, well, I have four weigh-ins. And uh, it says, uh, if I don't hit the weigh-ins, don't pay me. It was like, like, everyone was four grand the weigh-in it was. I was getting the weights, but, and, it was, and it was a four grand bonus if I hit the target. And 
had four weigh-ins. I missed all four weigh-ins. <laughs> it was all the way, so it cost me a lot of money as well. Yeah. Oh. But it used to be funny because you used to see the little shit running about in the paddock with his scales. And I'd be like... Oh, Neil. Yeah, yeah. Neil, yeah. This, this is uh, Neil Tupfus, the, boss, the yeah. team manager. That's Neil and you'd be like... Running around, he'd be like... He'd be in the motor on the high <laughs> of the curtain. Sort of, Couldn't you put a lot of weight on yourself he would for not the first weigh-in? He would not go away. And I'd take 12 and a half stone to argue. I'd just be scared at ah, the time, yeah. so... But he's banging on the high. And like, I won the, the, the treble at the TT. He did loads of results and that, but... Uh, I just had one recently with the, with the Mugen people, with the Jap snipers. The, uh, I've been asking Mr. Honda for the, one of my electric bikes, and uh, the first time I asked him, he just started laughing, thought I was taking the mickey and that. So after I've asked him for the 30th time, he, he got was me. like, yeah. look, right, blah, blah. this is four years into it, Shinden 4. Well, uh, they were supposed to be valued about a million pounds each, weren't they? I don't know what they're worth. Mm. They're, they're worth a few bob anyway. Mm. I, I was like, he says, right, 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 okay. He says, if you lose 10 kilos, you can have one of the bikes. <laughs> I was like, oh, you have to cut your leg off. So I, went for it. <laughs> I, went, I went for the weigh in uh, Northampton at Mugen and uh, wherever it is, Milton Keynes. I went on the train, had two full English breakfasts, <laughs> and had about 40 pound coins in my pocket, in my uh, shoes. And uh, I got on the scale, it was like 90 odd kilos. Fucking Japanese blocks. More like that. 90 odd kilos. <laughs> so I was way, way over heavier than I was in that. But I lost about. Three kilos, but I right. still got the bike out. You got the bike? Yeah, I got the bike cool. at home, yeah. It's right. quite cool. It's quite yeah, a cool bike to have. They are um, yeah, they're spending thousands of millions on titanium and carbon and everything else. Yeah, and I'm on pine chips to get yeah. them yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, I joined a gym just recently and I'd only been there two weeks and I found a hole in my trainer I could get my finger in and she complained and I got thrown out. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My gym's you my gym's, my gym's just got a new machine. It's fantastic. Yeah. They've got Snickers, crisps, yeah, yeah, pop, yeah, yeah, everything yeah, in it. Yeah. Coffee. Yeah. I've I'm been so told to keep away from saturated fat, so that's no shagging in the shower anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's going down, this conversation. <clears throat> but, James, you, you used to train a lot, and you still do, frankly. Yeah, cycling. I do a fair bit of cycling. I just think... I, I, don't, I don't know why, really. I don't need to do any more, but... Um, Quite a group of us go out. Been out this morning, done quite a bit. Thursday mornings is our um, our cycling. Yeah, day. long. But I'll try and get about three runs a week on my bicycle. I didn't never never a gym monkey really. Mm. I just felt that I just felt that sometimes we race in quite hot countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, Japan, them sort of places. And I never I didn't want to finish my career having not won a world championship, which I didn't. But I didn't want to finish my career having not won a championship and say, well, if only I'd have trained a bit harder, I might. I wanted to leave kind of no stone unturned. So if I didn't, it was down to the fact I didn't deserve it and know the reason. That's mm. all. So I, I, I worked reasonably hard at it and didn't have the talent to win it. So you can easily live with that. And you kind of... Somebody, I know it sounds daft, that, but there's a guy caught... Like, there's many, many riders had a lot of talent and not done a lot with it. And... The biggest exponent of that is a guy called Anthony Gobert, who was an Australian rider who just had so much talent, it was untrue. He didn't know how he could, he didn't know why he were quick. So when it all started, he did try hard, did train, big lad, but he was just incredibly fast. He came past me in the wet, and I always loved the wet. He came past me in the wet at Phillip Island, and I couldn't have stopped with him for two corners that had been upside down, and he did it the whole race. Yeah, every single I remember, time. I was there Fantastic. on it. Yeah. And it was on a bimotor or something. Yeah, it? on a... The, the, and when it went, the problem is with that, that when it went wrong and he wasn't winning, he didn't really know how to fix it because he didn't when it was going right in the first place, he didn't why. So his career sort of fell apart. He should have won world championships on his talent and he, and he didn't. And just been arrested for stealing someone's handbag or something. Yeah, so it, it, terrible, got really. Really, it really is terrible. Yeah. terrible. I had a fight with him at Donington. He was pissing all up the side of my motor home. And uh, for no reason whatsoever, just like, just all over the side of the bus. So as I come out, I was like, I ended up having a bit of a... You slot him? I just had to sort of grab him, like, so I'm not a fighter, rush at it, but I didn't expect, you know, didn't appreciate him peeing all on the side of the bus. No, no. It was a tool, really. Yeah, it was. He was a dickhead. But yeah, it was a dickhead. Yeah. But there was, he was. And, and he, he might be near tonight, but there was a lad that lives just, no, 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 sorry, not. There's a lad that lives just around the corner from here, or did, who was also another very talented man. Literally lived about two miles from here, Sean Emmett. Sean Emmett, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another Sean very talented. talented rider that yeah. couldn't kind of control his... Um, Lifestyle, I, guess I think. I think we we sure he would drink, wasn't it? Mm. I think he always liked to fight when he was drunk, and he got drunk a lot. Wow. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So, um, let's talk about this year. You've got a bike that needs sorting out. You're motivated. Uh, you focus on... Um, the people in the race for you this year, and I'm thinking out loud here, has got to be Hutchie and Michael Dunlop. Are they, are they the targets, I guess? They're the people you've got to beat, really? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the Michael's on fire. He's got so much passion, determination. Uh, he's got that drive, will to win, you know. And, and all the planets have lined up, and, and he's a real package now you mm. know he's uh another one that doesn't train before. though yeah he doesn't train much now no. but he's 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 got he's young in here as well yeah. which i was 25. a little bit lighter when i was younger but uh he's got loads and loads of talent and loads of determination as well which is sometimes it's a bit scary but like now he's he's a full mm. full package hutchy thinker uh trains really really hard he's, i was with him last night and uh Strange sort of character. Me and James spoke to him about it a little bit, but you know, last night was was a great Ian Hutchinson with a few pints, a few Guinnesses, a bit of crack, and uh, mm. and then some of the times you see him, he's he's, he's a bit different. But uh, hurts for him not to win. It hurts for them not to win. Them to had a bit of a lover's stiff at the mm. TT. Uh, but you know, I, I really rate Connor Cummins, my old teammate on the Padgett's bike. I think he's going to be really really strong. I think Bruce Anstey. I mean. <laughs> When you talk about weird people, Bruce Anstey's got to be he the is. weirdest in the world. You know, he's yeah. like, I, I don't know how old he is. He's 48, is he? 47? Yeah, 48 I think he's 48. Old, but, yeah. I mean, he does no training, he does no riding, no testing. And he just, he's got so much natural ability. You know, Hilly is in there. Uh, Peter Hickman, you know, just mm. went to TT 131 six for the first time. Old Michael Rutter still going right, that's the two ugliest people in the world. Hickman and, uh, <laughs> Hickman and Rutter. <laughs> Did you see the podium at Macau? Yeah, that was the ugliest podium I've ever seen in my life. It, it, <laughs> them two and Jessup. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's just poised in it. I really like it. I like it, me. I'm like a bit of a fan. So, you know, we've got the new bikes. Guy Martin's back on the scene. I was about to say, you haven't mentioned him. How do you yeah. think you go? I don't know. I'm worried about Guy, to be honest. He's. Uh, you know, you, you, I've spent so much quality time with him, one to one a little bit, and I'm I'm intrigued. Me, I like people and personalities, and I'm nibbling away at him, just seeing, you know, what he's up to and where, you know, and he's, oh, I've just bought a two hundred gram tractor and I'm renting it out, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, yeah, and I've got, I just bought this pub and I give hundred, I give, you know, Nick that pub didn't he in his village? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's making money now because this guy's, he's well, not asleep, this lad, outside of the racing and stuff, and uh, he was telling me about that. Uh, Bicycle ride he did from there. Oh, I read the book. Have you read the book? No. North to South. That, well, in, in Can it. Canada thing, yeah, yeah. All the way down to Mexico. And he's telling me, he's got a laptop out. He's showing me pictures of, you know, bears chasing him and. Mm. In his, yeah, his, blood his coming getting, out of his flipping oh, bum because yeah, his cycle yeah, sore yeah, and, and he's, he's you know, just getting, getting water out of streams and, mm. you know, eat when you can. He was like eating thousands of calories. He lost two stone and couldn't get the chocolates and they're crapping him fast enough and. Uh, you know, late showed me the way of sleeping in ditches and like in the middle of the desert asleep and they just said, look, you know, these guys come out, you can't sleep there, bear will have you or whatever, and somebody let him sleep in his in his garage. So he's got his head's full of full of interesting stuff really. And then, you know, he said he was pulling head off it down in ditches now and again, <laughs> having a wanking in in, in uh, ditches and stuff. But I mean what a thing. he said it's a life changing experience and I just think I'll oh, sooner it's one that I don't want to experience. Now. Uh, but he, he's done it, you know. And, but he said to me, he said, oh, it's now or never, boy. I was like, what do you mean? He said, oh, I need to win. I thought, well, it's not the attitude. You know. <laughs> that, no, I don't know. No, I mean, it's, I worry about it's, it, gone up a, it's gone up another level. He's actually not scared of crashing. He actually, he buzzes off crashing. He's had one or two massive crashes. And got, the two crashes that he had sh should have killed him, really, that. Mm. Balagheri. Glen Vine and the Instagram yeah. preview. They crashed the year before. They'd been in the trees and that. They'd yeah. been done, probably. But uh, I don't know. He's interesting. He talks... Utter shite, to be honest, loads of shite. But <laughs> and some of the stuff is going on about. Like, what is he on about? He thinks he's, he believes his dog talks. <laughs> Said it speaks to him. I was like, it doesn't. It's a dog. It? <laughs> it might, it might bark, but it doesn't talk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, maybe it's Lincolnshire. Yeah, he's yeah. yeah. But I tell you what. I mean, it's just a, you know, it's another gear in the cog, and it's you know, he, if. I've been to a few shows lately and stuff. He's not interested in that, but I go and I like the people and I speak to people, kids, families, and you know, I've seen the fans and all kids growing up to adults and working and still come to race meetings and that. And, you know, I've, he's, 
he's only asked me once about Guy Mine, everybody talked about him. You know, and he dropped me off at Faro Airport the other day. Fair play, we went two hours the wrong way. So he drove to Spain in his, in his van and took one of his bikes and you know, he drove me there and he helped me get my bags out. There's a lot of old women out saying, well, yeah, this guy mine me. <laughs> I've got my picture and all that. They all know him from the telly. No idea about his racing and that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's mm. uh, like all my teammates, you know, late Simon Andrews, Joey Dunlop, I was Michael Dunlop's teammate, Conor Cummins' team. All my teammates all, all through the years have been interesting characters, different, mm. Mm. a few weirdos. I think you've got the assholes. most weirdo this time, though, yeah. <laughs> he's weird. He's weird, but he's almost weird. He's I know, no, no. I mean, I'm like you. I admire him for all his talents that he has. And everything yeah. else. But another one that I'll still... <laughs> James, you can interview him. <laughs> last what? At the TT. Guy. He's actually all right with me. Well, he's not with me. No, he, I, I did... Uh, Understandably. I got... A lot of people say I'm hard to dislike, but well worth the effort. <laughs> <laughs> But my last interview with him, I asked him, I don't know, he, I, he'd finished third in the six, fourth in the 600 or something. When I said, you know, is this as competitive or whatever, or whatever, just something about the racing, because that's what we're supposed to do for the telly. And he said, do you know what a spatchcock is? <laughs> and at the time, I had no idea. Do you know what one is? It's a chicken that's been flattened out, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a baby chicken. But at the time, I had no frigging idea. But I didn't know how that related to, <laughs> to how he was going to go in the race. But Ask his dog. No, his dog will tell you. Yeah. <laughs> but it, I've asked him to do the forward for my book, you know. Is so, he? Well, my wife's done it actually, one, done one which is really, for me, made me cry and made me laugh at the same time, which, yeah. which books maybe are supposed to do. I don't read books, but they actually yeah. got all my attention just from a few words from the wife. But I thought it'd be quite quirky to let him do one. And he's, he said, yeah, me and Nigel will do it. The dog? Oh, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I haven't got, it could be a I've bit rough. No idea, well, it might it? make sense if dogs involved. I've got no idea what I was going to say, but uh, yeah. Mm. Well, I, I have honey badger. Is it the honey badger? The, honey... the most aggressive thing in the world. Yeah, that's honey what badger. they call cow crutch. Don't mess with honey badger, says. No, you don't. You know? yeah. Yeah. Well, pound I've, for pound. I've recently <laughs> read his recent book about the cycling thing, which actually it's okay. But the one before that is when you're dead, you're dead. I think yeah. it's called or something like that. That is absolute bollocks. <laughs> is, I read it twice just to see if I got some sort of. I thought I had a stroke. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I did a. We did a big chat show. I got called in at last minute. We're going to be. Uh, Barry Nutley was going to interview him for a load of people. Just room like this at uh, Umberside Airport in a function room there. Barry couldn't do it. He got ill. So I got called in at last minute. Went over dreading it because he can be such hard work. Can, no matter what. You've done your research, put your questions together, and it just never goes to God in the plan, and it can just be awful. Anyway, it was a really good night, and he was really chatty and really good, and he was just, he was in training for that American thing. Mm. And um, he said, oh, we've had to do lots and lots of scientific research because you've got to carry everything. You're not allowed to have anything given you. You can pick through, or you can find things, or you can kill animals, but you basically have to carry with you everything that's going to sustain you on that trip, right? So he says, what you need... As, as food with a lot of calories but that doesn't weigh a lot, right? You don't want to be carrying a lot of weight, you need calories. And he says, we've done a lot of scientific research. He's had people in white coats <laughs> looking at this, right? And he says, you know what the best food is for that? Pot scratchings. <laughs> <laughs> right? Pot scratchings. I said, really? This is in front of everybody? Yeah, pot scratchings can't beat him. And basically, he set off from Canada, <laughs> heading for Mexico with... Corks. He had... Mr. Porkies. That's all he had. <laughs> 15 packets of Mr. Porkies in his backpack. Well, actually, he's it's not possible. much different to any other racer because he gets them for free because he's an ambassador for them. He is, them. yeah. He is. Who is? He is. Yeah, he is. That's why, isn't he? Exactly. Yeah. He's the ambassador Mr. for Porkies? Mr. Porkies scratchings, yeah. apparently, yeah. And I think Nigel likes them. Yeah, he does, yeah. 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 <laughs> Nigel the dog likes them. Yeah. So you, yeah, you have got a very interesting character. This That's year. good. That but it is good. good. But it's uh, it's a bit worrying. And, and in fact, you said about uh, Guy saying he's got to step up and do it this year. I felt that about Michael Dunlop three years ago. Mm. But I think he's settled down. He frightened the life out of me about three years ago. But like he's said, I'd rather crash the, than not win. You know. He's a package now. Is Michael? He's. You think he's matured a great yeah. deal? Yeah. Right. I think I think he has. Yeah. But he, he doesn't. He can't call me not get not you know not winning. No. When he came in with that. Keely rang off for the in the super in the super stock race. I'm sure he beat with off. It. Yeah. I think he kicked the kicked the lever off because he couldn't handle it. With it was because uh, mm. Pucci was uh, beating him. But, it uh, crossed my mind actually that. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. Don't repeat that one. But I think. Um, and so we know you're riding the 
official Hondas in the big races. You'll be riding the 600 again for... Just for the Jacksons. It's a Jackson local boys. team, a, a family-run team. The, the parents of the lad that runs it, he was former, twice Formula 3 world champion, uh, Alan Jackson. So mm. they're, they're enthusiastic. Mm. They've, you know, they've got a real good 600 for me. Uh, finished fourth on it last year, I think. So uh, did a deep, you know, respectable that time. Really enjoy riding the 600. And uh, yeah, super stock bikes, the official Honda. And then... Uh, I'm riding the electric. Okay. Excuse me oh, again for the okay. Newgen. So, yeah, so. And another big event that's turning into a big event, and I really tell people that are here tonight, if you want to get to the TT and it's too busy, think about the classic TT, because I think it's a great event, and I think you enjoyed it, having the win on the pattern this year. Yeah, I really year. enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot more relaxed for us. We, you know, TT is just pressure, pressure all the time. You know, somebody wants an interview or whatever, or somebody's mm. banging on the door of the motor and, and, and poxy journalists yeah. on te television. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, you, you two guys are all right. Yeah. You, you've been there. You've been on the, you've been on the start <laughs> yeah, right. line, haven't you? Well, you are, aren't you? Yeah. You know me. I'm being honest with you. I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, some of them are a pain in the ass, yeah. you know. But that's fine. Uh, yeah. And then you, you go to the classic TT. It's the same track. The weather's normally okay. You know, you get to ride uh, a, a classic pattern, even though it's <laughs> brand new. It's not, mm. not original parts on it. But I enjoy it, again, because I'm a fan. There's two strokes. There's, you know... It smells and lots noises. Of okay, and lots yeah, of 500s, there's old RC30s, there's, you know, G50 matchlesses, AJSs, uh, there's them they're rebuilding the MV Augustas now, so you've got no, different noises, different smells, yeah. two strokes, four strokes, multi cylinder bikes, twins, you know, there's like TT. If a super stock bike went past and then a, su a super stock bike went past, mm, you wouldn't know the guy difference. on the street, you probably wouldn't know, very similar speed and stuff, so. But yeah, the classic TT is good, good for us. We, I really, really enjoy it. You mm. know, it's, uh, mm. I think sometimes it's probably a little bit unfair on some of the riders there. You know, somebody's riding an original Manx Norton mm. you know, on 80 grams worth of regenerated pattern. It's not quite fair, but mm. uh, I, I really love it. I really enjoy it. You know? mm. I must admit, I do. I think it's great. I love mm. the smell, the noises, and let you say the First time I wore earplugs this year, because... I've never wear earplugs on modern bikes at all. You should. I know. I'm deaf, and that's because what? of motorbikes. Yeah, pardon. But no, but seriously. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it on that pattern. I did one. Well, it's the first time it's ever done two laps in practice without breaking down. So mm. uh, I did two laps and I got off it and my head was ringing. I just so I had, I had to wear no choice. And mm. once I got him in, I was, I was okay. But I did 113.5 and it was not bad for a little Phenomenal. Five, 500 it's, twin cylinder thing. So. Which, what, top Pulling speed my of 100 ass around as well. If I had a lightweight jockey on it, it'd be really fast. Well, top speed of 140, is it? Yeah, early 140s. 140. Yeah. That must seem actually really slow at times. There must be places where you're thinking you could read a book. Yeah, it's, at times it is, yeah. feels slow, but it, it's actually nice, you know. It's, it is really nice and enjoyable, you know. Them super bikes, as much as we say we enjoy riding them, I don't think, I don't think we do. Brutal. They are terrifying at times, you know. They've got so much power, over 200, 210, 215, 220 horsepower. And... Uh, in places over the bumpy sections, they're, they're riding you. You're just a passenger, and you're just sort of thinking, mm. "Fuck it, you know, what's mm. the thing going to do?" Hope it lands where I want it to yeah. land. Yeah. And an ill handling bike around there is the most worst thing in yeah. the world. But you know, the electric bike is really, really fun to ride. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea and you know, all that. It's not really a TT win, etc. But beautiful to ride. Really, really smooth. Really fast, precise, and loads of corner speed. And, uh, and it's a bit like the pattern. You know, even it vibrates a bit and yeah. it's noisy. It's just uh, on them little thin tires. They turn really, they turn really yeah. quick and. I reckon, you know, if you had a speed gun in the middle of, of a hundred mile an hour corner, you'd be as fast on the pattern as you would yeah. be on, on, on the superbike for sure. Mm. Just they've just got that much brute power. Mm. You come out of Quarter Bridge, it just goes <laughs> to, mm. to Bradham Bridge, and then bang, bang. But yeah. these things just to get the, the really satisfying to ride because you get you get the best out of yourself and you get the best yeah. out of the bike, you know. But we run about it before and there about sector times of the TT. It's really hard to get the perfect lap on a big bike because you know different riders have got different sector times and the perfect lap round there is nearly 135 mm. miles an hour mm. now, so, uh, which you would have had on the 250 a lovely thing to ride on first yeah. TT win on them things yeah. as well so. now questions I think ladies and gentlemen um, we have heard a load of old rubbish from us lot up here chatting away but tonight is your night and I think we've got about 15 odd minutes of questions uh, I know we can't be late leaving here because John's left his dog with the neighbours and they're Cantonese so we don't want to be too <laughs> <laughs> How do, you, how do you follow that? Ladies and gentlemen, any questions to begin with? I'm sure there are some. <laughs> Rules of engagement, if you get the microphone, you can speak. Yeah, here we go, right, sir. Okay. Uh, Steve, just remembering uh, Barry Sheen, could you give us a scurrilous story about Barry and yourself and the best practical joke that you did on him? 
Good question. Oh, Good. Um, scurrilous thing. Uh, there gen genuinely isn't any policeman in here, is there? No. <laughs> if you are, I hope you're off duty. The most scurrilous thing I ever did with Barry Sheen, and I haven't actually told many people, and it might go in my book, but we burgled someone once. Um, <laughs> and the reason we did, it was like Robin Hood. Uh, at the time, Barry was living at Charlwood near to Gatwick Airport, and he had the big manor house and everything else, and had a little, lady, little girl that came in, a home help girl. Um, and how can I put it politely? She was rotund. She was slightly overweight, I guess you say. And she had this boyfriend who was clearly after her to borrow money off her. And that's exactly what he did. He managed to borrow £250 off of Stephanie's home help, used up all her savings and everything else. And as soon as he got the money, cleared off. Never saw him again. Well, Barry managed to track, it, track down where he lived. And it would have been 1983. <laughs> again, it had to be my Rolls Royce, not his. <laughs> Uh, with balaclavas on, we went to this house, we broke in. <laughs> Can you imagine world check? Imagine Jorge Lorenzo doing that. <laughs> and we broke into this bloke's house, we took his Bang of Oaths and stereo system, a shotgun, <laughs> uh, there was some furniture that looked okay, all sorts of stuff. We basically thought we got about 250 quid's worth of money, took it back, flogged it to his mechanics, bought some stuff. I've actually still got the Bang & Olufsen stereo. <laughs> but I paid for it, and we gave this girl her money back. So that was sort of a, a little deed that we did. But it was yeah. sort of Robin Hood, I guess. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Practical Joke on Barry. He didn't like me playing Practical Jokes. But one I'm very proud of, uh, and I've done it on a few people now. And if John had stayed at my house tonight, I was going to do it on him. But uh, nice little story. Wind someone's window down, particularly electric window, wind it down, and I always carry at home, I've always got a load of broken glass, put it on the seat with a brick, and everyone comes out, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> and then you go, oh, so we've had loads of Jippo problems around here. And, and so I lent him the plastic and the tape and everything else, and he drove back down to Surrey, phoned up auto windshields, they or <laughs> ordered a side window for a Mercedes 450 SL. <laughs> And he drove it around there three days later and they told him he'd wound his window down. <laughs> Try it, it's easy. And, <laughs> thank you. That, I told you it'd be an exceptional evening, not for those reasons. Um, any more questions? I'm sure there are some. You must, gentlemen, two in the middle there. You always oh, yeah, find yeah. the most difficult people in the middle, so... Put your hand up again, sir. Where are you? Okay. Pass that down. Thank you. <laughs> Jamie, one for you. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, well, super bikes. I, yep. I missed last weekend's racing because the TV didn't function. And I understand that Chaz Davis came off in the second race. Yep. How come that he can pick the bike up and carry on? Because I thought the new ruling was that he can't do that. Yeah, you're correct. But in VSB, you're not allowed. And, and in actual fact, in most uh, national championships now, in fact, I think all, uh, you're not allowed to pick a crashed bike up and get going. Simple reason, you're likely to have something wrong with the bike. You might have cracked a lever. Yeah. It might just snap off as soon as you get to the next corner. There you've no brakes. And it's a safety thing. Um, however, strangely, in World Superbike, you can still get back on. And in, and in MotoGP, actually. Yeah. Mm. The... the the most uh, interesting thing for me about the crash is what you have to have at World Superbike is a tilt switch. So if your bike goes on its side, and this is to stop the bike hitting the gravel, uh, yeah. potentially the, the throttle cable or whatever throttle actuation mechanism ripping out, thing goes on full chart, it's quite dangerous. So you're supposed to have it, so when the bike goes on its side, it stops. So you should be able to pick it up. Most of them have starters on now, and you should be able to get going, but he's never stopped. If you look, his bike was actually spinning around on its own on tarmac, so the throttle was stuck open a little bit, and it was still in gear. He grabbed it and grabbed the, the clutch and, and picked it back up, still running, so it should have stopped, which is something you would have thought would have put a complaint in, but they didn't. But in <coughs> World Championship racing, you are allowed to jump back on. Thank you. Uh, in fact, his foresight, he was actually getting the clutch when he was sliding down the road. It was pretty impressive. Yeah, and the, the funny thing is, when the rule came in to stop people getting back on after a crash, it kind of upset me a little bit until I started thinking about, yeah, potentially, the amount of times we've all jumped back on and got to the next corner and find you've no brake lever or mm. there's oil pouring out or whatever, you've ruptured a casing. 
but a little bit of me thought, yeah, but it's good to see the, the enthusiasm and, and kind of bravery that somebody jump to his feet, leap back on, flipping, kick this flipping yeah. bits of broken screen out and get going again. You know? I, I think I watched World Superbikes at Silverstone, Troy Bayliss jumped off, off three, three times three and got times. back on still finished in the end yeah. points, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something a bit of conspiracy like that. with that one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, because it should have stopped. Switch, yeah. And yeah. the thing is now, most superbikes run a starter. Uh, they, they've got to run a battery, they can't run total loss ignition. And, and They're underweight anyway. So yeah, so they, they run a starter motor, so you can start them on the button. If you going back about, well, four or five years, everybody had to run uh, a starter little engine, you pushed it on the back wheel. So they didn't have a starter motor, and you, you could potentially, a four-cylinder bike, a Japanese bike, would you could push it and get it going if you were good. But a Ducati with big pistons and high compression, there's no way you'd get it going. So that there was a controversy then. Why did his tilt switch not work and kept going anyway? Yeah, but he got back on three times and still got points. But he was a determined lad, was Bailey. Another question, yes, sir. Just hang on a second. A uh, question for John. What's your favourite bit of the TT circuit and your least favourite bit of the TT circuit? Uh, well, I, I love all of it, to be honest. Uh, they, about three years ago, they asked me uh, about... Uh, they were going to name a corner after me, which was uh, was really, really special. And it's cool, actually, to be to, to get asked that. And uh, my favourite corner is uh, when you go through Hanley's, the big walls, and it's like a... You go through Hanley's big walls, a left and a right, and you sort of drop down a, a, a little sort of a crest, and it goes right left, and it's sort of flat out on a superbike just if you get get a good run. And uh, I picked that corner, and uh, it's a really weird one, really. You'd think, oh, the Craig or somewhere, loads of people, but there's you never see anybody there. There's no spectators or anything. Just like there's a little, little lay-by on your left, though, isn't there, is there? Uh, Am I thinking the right one? No, there's. Uh, no, it's, it's over a bridge. There's like a little stream on the, ah, okay. underneath it. A, but yeah. there is actually it's quite cool now because there's a few people walk through the fields just to have a, to have a look since they named it after that after me. But uh, that's my favourite bit. I think when I won my first TT, I passed I passed a lad called Lowy McNelly uh, just coming out of there, not with us anymore. Unfortunately, he got killed at the Ulster Grand Prix, and uh, I just just passed him coming out. And it just felt felt such a great pass, and it always just stuck in my head that I loved that corner. I also passed Adrian Archibald through there and I won my first Superbike TT in 2004. It's always felt, felt really, really cool. And, and uh, I suppose the least favourite bit for me, it's a little section from uh, Parliament Square to, uh, to, to the, the Gooseneck. And I don't know, I've got a little mental block with it. I, just, I can ride it okay, but... And the more I think about it, the more anxious I get to buy it when I, when I get there. And I uh, probably don't like Parliament Square because I chain snap my lad. 19 second lead in the senior yeah, I mean, in 09. Yeah, that, was, that was tough. That was really sick about that one. But uh, yeah, just that little section is my, probably my worst section. But the uh, thing is, now I've got to sort that out. You know, I don't know if I'm fast through there, slow through there, but whatever it is, I need to be strong everywhere. Every single tenth counts now at the TT. So my favourite bit's McGuinness's. Which so, is cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll always be on the map. You're never going to get me off a map. Just, I'm on just, there forever. Yeah. Just the one corner. They named all the churches after me. So. <laughs> <laughs> another question, ladies and gentlemen. Another one somewhere out there. Yes, sir. Another one right in the middle. He's not up here, isn't it? Fucking one. Where are we? Put your hand I'm up. Jumping up here. <laughs> Thank you. It's a question for John. Um, obviously, to lap the TT at the speeds that you do, you have to know pretty much every inch of the, of the course and where your braking points are and every little wiggle and stuff. In the last couple of years, have you ever thought, have one, a senior moment where you thought, oh shit, I don't know where I am? <laughs> that was at Quarter Bridge when you were sliding along, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, the, the, well, the simple answer is no. <laughs> it's... Uh, no, I never ever think, I never know where I am. Uh, you know, it's funny, you know, I reckon, I reckon if we had it on the telly up here now, I'd, I'd know where I was on the track, even if there was no picture on it, it was just the noise, you know, I just know it. I'm not saying I'm, I still respect the circuit, I still, you know, they can have you at any split second, but uh, I never think, uh, I always know where I am. I, I get all sorts of weird thoughts through my head. Uh, you know, you go past Crosby and you can, you know, 180 man, now you can see people having a good time drinking pints and stuff. You think, fucking bastards, they're having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> they're having a, you're like, oh, stressed, stressed to death. And 
it's funny you see things, you smell things, you know. You know, always smell a barbecue at uh, going through uh, Kurt Michael. You drop down into Kurt Michael, and at the end of the village, there's a left, right, left, and it's like a little gazebo thing, and all cooking burgers. Oh, I don't mind one of them, you know. So, <laughs> and you, you, know, you, you, do, you do see things, see what, animals as well, little ferrets and stuff, and birds and stuff, and that. But you do, you do, your it's mind wanders a little bit, but it's funny, you just straight back into, you know, into that full concentration. But, didn't I hear you say you could smell when it's going to rain? Kind of. I, I think I can, yeah. yeah. I know that's a bit of a sixth sense, really. It's funny in the other man. It's, if it's not been raining for a bit, it sort of hits the trees first, and then right. it? there's like a lot of garlic and mm. weird sort of funny There is a garlic, the Bishop's Court. Yeah. I can yeah. always remember Wild that. garlic. Wild garlic mm. smell. Yeah. You, you can get that, that, you can feel the pressure drop, and, mm. and you, can, you, can, you can feel it. And there was one, there's a bit of TV footage, it was all going into Braddon Bridge. Not brother, into Union Mills. Yeah, I remember and, it. And Keith and Moore crashed. It just missed the wall. Yeah, I just went. I was out of the throttle because I could just, just had that feeling. Weird, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, and it was wet, wasn't it? And it was, yeah. it was wet. And yeah. Guy nearly had a huge crash, and Keith actually went down, and uh, we're all fucked. But there's me and Cameron and all all on the road together, and uh, it's like, Whoa. yeah, super spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I'm always one for line. Whoa, there'll be another day. Do you know what I mean? They're still pushing on. And, the, the way we are now, we won't race in the rain at the TT, whether that's right or wrong, I believe we shouldn't race in the rain, but uh, it started getting worse and worse, and you know, Michael Dunlop come flying past, I'm like, it's gonna, get, go. it's gonna get stopped, you yeah. know. The further into lap we got, it was red flag, so they were risking it for nothing, but yeah, you can, mm. there's all sorts of funny mm. feelings, the wind mm. directions you can feel, right. and you know, you're going up the mountain, and you, you, you sort of know that you're gonna get a push from the, either left or the right hand side from whichever the wind's, the wind's going. I don't know north, south and east and all that. I just know <laughs> I'm going right. to get a push from the left or the right, you know. So you position yourself in the road before you make the turn into the mountain, uh, the mountain box as well. But that's something you can't teach. The newcomers come and they've got to find out that themselves, you know, because you can mm. tell them as much as you want. But until you're actually on track that you, you don't, you, you got, and it takes, well, I never stopped learning after, after doing 20 TTs and riding every, Every bike out there, it's, I still always learn something. Mm. But, uh, mm. Another question, maybe, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, right, right, right over in the corner. Hold on. They're doing this on purpose. They bloody yeah, they well are, are aren't they? Yeah. <clears throat> I think the young lady that has put her hand up has ownership of the youngest person that I've ever seen at one of our talks. He's fast asleep, or she, I should say. He. Oh is 15 weeks old. Oh, hey. So that is a first for us. We like, we like to catch them young. So. <laughs> Do you think the popularity of the TT will be its demise because people will just try to sanitise it, make it safer, stop spectators being sat on grass verges and things like that? Um, mm. We went probably four years ago, you could sit anywhere, be anywhere, and two years after that, they were grandstanding and not being, you know, the beauty of it is being able to walk in the paddock and just enjoy seeing the machines, talking to people who are riding the race. Do you think that its popularity will end up sort of making it a little bit more like um, so, MotoGP? Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a story now. <laughs> Funny you should say that. On the way down here, I was speaking to Gary Thompson, the clerk of the course. He rung me up and... Uh, constantly under pressure from people about people standing in places and everybody's you know sort of in the firing line and uh, the they were talking about the end of the Sulby Strait you know having people stood at the end of the Sulby Strait what do you think about that and I was like well nothing it's just that people stood there for years and what do you think about as a rider are they putting you off I was like well no I've not when I'm I mean, 200 mile an hour and I grab the brake lever. I ain't looking, hmm. you know, who's having what after breakfast. I just got to get things stopped and get in, get him turned in, you know. But it's, uh, I think that I said to him, you've got to be really careful. You don't, don't spoil it for hmm. people, you know. It's, hmm. it's, you know, you put a grandstand up and charge a fiver, they just won't go. And there'll hmm. have been people, locals who come out, probably might only come out for the senior race and with a program and a cup of tea and whatever. And they won't come out. And, you know, I said, if you put a grandstand on there, do it free. Make sure whatever you do, people can still stand in that spot, you know. And uh, but I don't know. It's just the pressure in it from everybody. Health and safety. Is it? Uh, that's yeah. the thing. The, 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 there is two sides. Obviously, I mean, I, I think I completely agree with John because I think part of the fun mm. for you guys is 
those people stood on the side waving their programme. That, that to me, is part of the TT, isn't it? When you go around, it's even, incredible if, you're, film, even if you're in 10th place, you still get everyone waving, and it's such a, a wonderful thing. But, but the insurance is the big factor, and what Gary Thompson, who is in charge of it all, is is the insurance factor. And, and uh, it sounds awful, but riders can die, but pe pe spectators can't. And yeah. when that starts happening, then you've got some real serious issues. So what everyone has to think about is where people are in, in the firing line. And the problem is... There is not, there's not such well, a thing as a firing line. Because, a firing well, line. exactly, because it can be anywhere, can't 2007, it? 2007, there was a guy, Australian guy, killed. Uh, yeah. He was at uh, Joey's 26, and the bike went up the hill, and you would stand there with all your family. Yeah. You, know, you, would, you would have your kids there anyway. No, no problem. No problem. Oh, you and the think. bike whizzed up, up yeah. the hill and killed her. Yeah. So there's three. And ironically, the guy was, was about, he had about two weeks to live because right. he was full of cancer. Mm. And he's. All his dream wanted to be was go to the TT and see the TT. Right. And fucking bike killed him. Yeah. Basically, he was going. To, he was going to die anyway. But he got finished well, off by a fire blade. That's better well, than dignitas, really. Well, yeah. well, <laughs> that's awful. No, but but, like but the fact is, it is hugely difficult for the organisers because they are under pressure. The, what they do have to be seen to be doing is not have spectators on the outside of corners, and that's that's changed already. In places like. Certain places in Bray Hill, they've moved people because there was a bike went in the crowd down the bottom there. Yeah, that's true. And, and I can understand what they're doing, but truthfully, I don't think that will really affect the TT because other things are moving on even further. If you want to go to, well, I don't know if you have been to a Grand Prix lately, but Mugello is the most wonderful Grand Prix. It's in lovely settings near Florence and everything else. But the nearest you'll get to the track is probably to the end of this room. Yeah. And that's mm. about as near as you'll get to the track. So the TT mm. will never get like that, I don't think. I mean, you get. I think it's. I think it's such a special place, and I think it's such a a unique place. It's like got its own. It's like its own umbilical cord or something. It just works, doesn't it? Somehow, you know. It's like there was a few selfie sticks coming out a few years ago, and they were dangerous. They were not far off hitting a few of them. And it was on the radio. It was like, and all of a sudden, stopped. No more selfie sticks, you know. So yeah. they do listen. They do try, but you know, you can't make. You cannot make that place safe. There's no, no. way you can. No. You could stand somewhere and that a bike could hit you. Or a side yeah, yeah, car. sure, sure. You yeah, know, that lunatic in that Subaru going around as well. If that had a crash, it just killed 300 people in mm. a few places. So, mm. but yeah. where, where did you get everybody to sign a declaration? Yeah, you, know, yep. you know, how does that work? Yeah. But one day, someone will, because unfortunately, we are living in this world of health and safety and, and everything else. I hope I'm retired by then. Both yeah, well, I won't be here. I know that. That's for sure. Yeah. Actually, I'd have been a lot younger, but my mum was shy. <laughs> um, one more question, perhaps. Like one more. Okay, two. I'll do two more. Right, so Good question, though. Yes. Yeah. Good evening. Thanks for a very entertaining evening. My, my question is quite peculiar, really. But uh, John, you're as enthusiastic as you can get when it comes to the TT. A true rider. You ever fancied sidecars? Sidecars. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have, yeah, I have fancied it. Uh, Maria can drive it. No. <laughs> <laughs> she can get inside. Uh, she's got an MB as well, I can't get one. Oh, you'll get one, don't worry. Um, yeah, I, 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 do you know what? Yes, I do, but probably not the TT for some reason. I think a TT side. For some car. reason, because it's yeah. stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's lunacy, that's the reason. It is, it is lunacy, but I, I, I have respect for Molly and I have respect for them. Oh, I have respect for them. I think they're good at what they do you know mm. to get one of two two men on a little 600 doing 117 yeah. mile an hour he's, yeah he's not hanging about and uh you know he makes his own chassis and and uh he's an in, such an interesting blow bit Incredible, of yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i like it i like the you know i think some of them some of the sidecars down the field i wouldn't go to the shop for a paper on one of them <laughs> there is some shit heaps but there's, there's sharp end there is some uh some good talented people that uh, uh, do what they do and they don't they get the recognition they deserve i don't think but uh I've driven one, I've driven two, I've driven uh, the big long one with the engines behind you, the big Formula One outfit. I thought that was fantastic. I drove it at uh, Donington and really, really enjoyed that. And uh, I drove the Formula Two one where you sort of sit around with the engine in the front like the TT bike and I, I found that quite difficult. I found, I don't know, I couldn't open my legs wide enough. I got three, still got three big screws in, in my right hip from when I, I brought my leg at uh, Alton Park and I've never, never had the flexibility in my, in my legs. And, I've only got little legs anyway. I can't sort of, I couldn't reach around it. That's, uh, I feel like my missus, I couldn't reach around it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I, I don't know. I think I'll leave it to the pros. I know Michael Dunlop's had a going one. He's, he's been pretty handy in one as it well. He was all right. Yeah, he, he was going all right. He finished third in a damp race in a base B. Mm, yeah. Yes, yeah, good. Yeah. But I, for now, 
No, not really. I had to go in a motocross sidecar uh, at some event, and all I wanted to do was get out of it. <laughs> I was on the side of it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Myself. That was uh, not a great experience, but uh, yeah, they're definitely good at what they do, but we'll leave it for now. Maybe though. Why have you got one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do you do you think the memorial laps are the most appropriate way to remember the fallen, and do you ride them um, quietly? Oh. Um, and John Surtees, do you think there's a better way to remember them, him than to 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 do it via a memorial lap? Another good question. Oh, good question. Uh, yeah. uh, before you have time to think, I must just tell you a very, very good friend of mine, Gary Nixon. Some of you will have heard of him. He was the AMA yeah. double number one plate holder. Died seven years ago, eight years ago, um, and was a good mate of mine, and I really loved him, and he was a great, great friend. And I was asked to ride his memorial lap at, Lago at uh, Indianapolis. They got his Triumph out that he used to race, the three-cylinder Triumph, Trident and everything else. Got it all out in Nixon's colours and everything else. I went to Indianapolis, never raced around it, but commentated there. So I walked it twice on a boiling hot day just so I knew where I was going because I didn't want to feel a tick going, and, you know, being all wobbly and everything else. So I walked it twice. It took me about two hours to do it. They brought the bike out and they said, you do know it's customary uh, for someone that's passed away, we go the opposite way around. <laughs> Honestly, I swear to you. So I did that whole lap. Left me wobbling and not knowing where I was going. <laughs> but anyway, back to a more serious. I've done, I've done, I did that Joey Dunlop uh, memorial thing in 2013. They wanted me to be to be Joey. I was in full red Honda replica replica Joey, and uh, I thought half of me felt that it wasn't appropriate really somehow, and uh, half of me was really proud to, to do it. Uh, it was all a real big kept secret, and uh, I ended up putting. Nobody seen what was going on. We just wheeled the bike out and myself out in these colours. And I don't know. I got some, a little bit negative on Twitter and Facebook and that. You know, people oh, well, I should have been. You know, let them to rest and all that sort of stuff. So I got mixed feelings on it. It's a it's a difficult one to sort of say. I was sort of in a corner really. I had to do it. Family wanted me to do it and all that. And uh, but it put a lot of pressure on me as well. You know, I didn't at times. I got, I did, I brought the outright like record on the last lap and got on the podium. Michael Dunlop won it. Cameron was second, I was third, so it was, it was okay. So, but you know, I've done a few of these. I think, you know, I think I did rode the Nortons as well. We all rode the Norton on behalf of a lot of the lads that have passed away, and that felt really special. I was Steve, I did the Rod Stevie's laps Norton and stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I think, think we've got to remember him, haven't we? I don't know, we've got to do something, but whether that's. Were you particularly talking about the ones where like 25,000 people get on the bike and go around? Like we've seen, is that one of you talking about? Because so there's, there's there's sort of memorial laps. So your one was you were actually racing in his kit, yeah, which is completely different to what we've seen. Uh, it's kind of like an extension of you know these roadside shrines where people piled flowers onto onto lampposts where somebody's been killed. Not just racing. This is uh, people get killed in cars and on you know on the road and they strap a lot of flowers to lampposts. I think that's a bit weird anyway, to want to remember where it happened, really, myself. Hmm. And I also find it quite weird that they'll put these memorial laps on at the TT where they get 20,000 people on bikes. Basically, the front end's coming down the mountain and the tail end doesn't even set up from the grandstand. And I think that's weird because I'm co fairly convinced that of the 20,000, 19,500 had never met the... It's, it's a, it, it, sometimes it ain't even somebody that f sort of famous. It's a, I, I've, I've got questions about it myself, but you know, if people want to hmm. do that, I think they wanted to lap around the track with a lot of other people. But you can't do more than five miles an hour because there's a zillion people out there. Yeah, I, I, we have, um, sorry to cut you off there, but we've got one more question from Tim. Right. Well, it's not actually from me, it's from a gent in the front row here. Wants to know uh, what was the worst bike that you ever rode, each of you, started with Steve? Um, the worst bike I ever properly rode was um, in 1976. I was sponsored by a lovely gentleman called Dave Moore, who was a builder from Guildford, and he went to America and bought a 750cc TZ Yamaha, or 700, I think it was, TZ Yamaha, brought it back, and for some unknown reason that only he will ever be able to answer, he decided to put it in a Tony Fowl frame. 
Uh, you won't know what that is, but it's basically a single tube aramaki, you know, those yeah. just spine Big things. central spine, yeah. Big central spine yeah. thing, and it got a couple of little spindly, uh, like, Meccano brackets that came down that held the engine in. Uh, the front forks went in this stock with a piece of threaded rod that held the fork clamps and everything else down there. And every time I fell off, the front forks had come off. And I never knew if they'd fell off before I crashed or after. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the worst part I ever rode. And I crashed it so many times, I think in the end I finally did bend it and that was the end of it. Yeah. John, your uh, worst? Probably the worst bike I rode was 2000 when I was Joy Dunlop's teammate, the Honda VTR SP1. Uh, and I probably been a little bit hard on the bike. It was more the tyres at the time. I, there was, uh, I had so many in instability problems. The bike wouldn't go in a straight line. So it, uh, it wasn't very fast and, and it wouldn't go in a straight line. And uh, it was just weaving that much on the road that I had bruises all up both my arms and all down my legs were all, all bruised. And, uh, but the, and in the senior race, we did uh, one stop uh, pit stop strategy and put 32 litres on it, which made it even worse. <laughs> Couldn't even reach the handlebars. Uh, but the other side to that story was Joey Dunlop was my teammate and Joey won the race on an SP1. I hated that bike. I, 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 I hated, it was my first time on a, on a super bike and uh, like in the official Honda team, Joey's teammate, and, you know, all the things you'd ever dreamed of doing was being Joey's teammate, which was great. And, but I actually, the, the, I hated being on the bike and I was under so much pressure and, and one thing or another and uh, I was really, really struggling. I was actually going faster on my 250 too strong than I was on the 1000 Superbike. And uh, we uh, <clears throat> changed, changed tyre manufacturers for the race. We just put Pirellis in it for the race and it completely transformed the bike and uh, ended up standing on the podium with Joey in that race as well. So it was the worst bike and, mm. you know, the, the, one of the greatest really that turned my career, career around to actually put me right at the front in in Superbike, because you can win a 600 TT race and it, it disappears into the distance, but if you win you, at the front on Superbikes, it's the, they're the special ones. Fantastic. Mine's James? a bit similar. Uh, best, one of the best bikes I ever rode was probably the most dangerous. It was a, because I couldn't ride it properly, I was riding for um, an hero of mine called Kenny Roberts, who was running a team out of Northampton, and the bike was uh, Medinas, they called it. It was a three-cylinder, two-stroke, 500, Produced about 160, 170 brake horsepower, but it only weighed 115 kilos because you got a weight dispensation if you only ran three cylinders, not four, which was more usual for the 500 two strokes at the time. And the idea was you could get around corners quick and it was, you almost wanted a fast corner speed like a 250, but with almost the power of a 500 and therefore you should be able to get around the circuits quick. Tried that theory, hurt me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Crashed it a lot. I got wireless and I knew the bike was lovely. It was all carbon fibre. I got to work with Kenny, so it was one of the best years racing I ever had. It was brilliant to work with him. Uh, but eventually, after knocking lumps off myself for six months, I set half of Czechoslovakia on fire with it and uh, never raced it again. I came home, came home in a, a framework, brought my pelvis, and uh, one of the most painful uh, episodes in my life was Somewhere in the uh, <laughs> operations, I'd had a catheter tube fitted into my bladder and I had a bag with wee in it. And in Leeds, they released me from, I got transferred back to Leeds General Infirmary and they said, we'll send you home now, you're ready to go, you can use your crutches, the framework's all stable, we just need to go and take your catheter tube out. Sent a young nurse, she pulled on the tube, it didn't come out, she pulled harder, it still didn't come out. And after several minutes of pulling and pulling, and it was very, very uncomfortable for me. The older nurse came in and says, well, have you let the balloon down? There's a balloon in the end. They, they put... <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, my, my cock ended up that long in that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. And can we ask who had to wipe your bum at this period? <laughs> I, what I, I just love is the, the worst bike you've ever ridden. Bold. Yeah. The worst bike you've ever ridden goes to a cafe to tube, so I think... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'll join me in saying what a delight it has been to have these three gentlemen with us.
I'll apologise the language that's come out of here tonight. Um, John does have bits of merchandise in here. If anyone wants anything signing and bits and pieces like that, I'm sure he'll be up to it. I brought a couple of books along if anyone wants any of those. But just on a serious note, uh, one or two of you have driven here tonight and you've probably had a drink. So I'm going to organise a race in a minute, if you like. <laughs> uh, thank you very much indeed. Well, right. right. OK. Right. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start the auction now.